Okay, self-referential classes. So I, I've copied the definition of our node class over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a very simple chain of these nodes. And we're going to do it statically using statically allocated nodes first. And then we'll do it all dynamically using new and delete. So let's say that I have a main function. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a node object called N1, and I'll pass 5 into its constructor. So somewhere out in memory, we're going to get the N1 object. We pass in 5 as the object, which gets set to its private data member. I'm not going to write the names. And the constructor also sets the next pointer to null. So that's what N1 looks like. I can do the same thing for N2. And this time, just to differentiate, I'm going to pass 10 in. So again, out in memory, we get an object called N2. Its object has the value 10, and its next pointer points to null, just like that. And I'm going to do the same thing for N3 with 15. So N3... Just like that. So I have these three node objects in memory. Their constructor simply takes the parameter, assigns it to the private data member object, and then the private the constructor also assigns the next pointer to point to null. So now I want to link these things together. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is just create a general pointer that I can use. And you'll, you'll see in just a minute how I'm going to use that. And I'll call this node pointer. And I want to start it off pointing to N1. So how do I make it do that? I can just use the address operator N1. So after this, I have a pointer here that points to N1. And it's called node pointer. Now it's very important, just like you know before, we have to differentiate between the node pointer and what it's pointing to. These are nodes, and this is a pointer to a node, not the same thing. And to make things a bit more complicated, each of these nodes, because they're self-referential classes, has a pointer that also points to a node. Now these pointers are exactly the same as this pointer, except that these pointers are members of these objects, private data members of these objects. Usually we have a pointer like this, an external pointer that will let us navigate through these chains, and you'll, you'll see that, and, and also keep track of them, and, and you'll see that in a subsequent example. Now what I want to do is I want to link these up in order, and I want to make this object, uh, N1's next pointer, point to N2 to create that chain. And I can do that by simply passing in to the set next pointer method of N1, N2's address. So I can say N1.set next pointer. So that's going to set this next pointer, and I want to make it store N2's address. I want to make it point to N2. And I can do that by, again, using the ampersand operator, or the address operator. What this is going to do is now this N1's object next pointer no longer points to null. It points to N2. Let's do it just like that. Now I want to do the same thing to link up N2 and N3. And so I want to set N2's next pointer. So 
So I can say into.set next pointer. And to make it point to N3, I have to pass in N3's address. I can do that using the address operator. After this executes, I'll have a picture that looks like that. Now notice that, first of all, node pointer can point to, to any node. So it can point to N1, I can make it point to N2, I can make it point to N3. Just like this next pointer is pointing to N2, I could have also made it point to N3. Um, I could have made this next pointer point to N1. And I'm going to use this node pointer to follow this chain of pointers and I'm going to print the values out. And the way that I can do that, what gives me these values 5, 10, and 15? Well, it's the get object method. So I have a pointer to the N1 object. So if I say C out node pointer and I want to call the get object method, and I can do that by using the dereference operator. What this is going to do is this is going to call the get object method of the object that the point the pointer points to. Node pointer points to N1, so get object, it's calling this get object method for this object, and it returns five. So in terms of my output, this statement is going to print five. Now, how do I move this pointer along? Well, essentially what I want to do is I want to make node pointer point to N2. I could certainly just say node pointer, you know, I could do this. I could say node pointer is equal to N2, right? That would assign N2's address to node pointer. But what I want to do is follow this chain, follow this chain. I can do that by getting the next pointer on N1. So I can say that node pointer, and in fact these are the same addresses, right? Ampersand N2, or the address operator on N2, gives me this, it's the same address that's stored in the next pointer of N1. So I can say node pointer is equal to node pointer get next pointer. Yeah, and you're right. I mean, this is confusing. I'm using node pointer, which points to N1, to change its value, but that's okay. It's almost like, um, you know, we can say X is equal to X plus 1, but what I'm doing here is node pointer uh, points to N1, and I want to store its next pointer in node pointer. After this happens, Now node pointer points to N2. And I'm in exactly the same situation. I've just got a node pointer pointing to N1. And I can say C out. Now I want to print N2's value. So I can say C out node pointer get object. Node pointer points to N2. I'm calling N2's get object and it returns 10, so this is going to print 10. Once again, I'm going to follow this pointer so that it points to N3 and I'm going to use get object to give me 15 so I can print it. To do that, I say node pointer is equal to, and I'm going to use node pointer again to call get next pointer after this statement executes node pointer is going to point to N3 now I can say C out 
node pointer get object that's going whoops node pointer sorry about that just like that That is going to call the get object method of the object that node pointer points to. Node pointer points to this object in three. It's going to call this object's get object method, or this node's get object method. I mean, nodes are objects, and so are the integers contained therein. And that will return 15, and that's what will be printed. So there's the output. So now we're going to do all of this using dynamic allocation. We'll get rid of N1, N2, and N3, and we'll just use pointers.